Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are have all hands on deck as we are preparing for hurricane slash tropical storm Debbie to arrive here um, really for us tomorrow. So today is Wednesday. It is about uh, 1130 in the morning. We are supposed to get the brunt of the rain tomorrow, which is Thursday, um, here at the nursery, Creekside Nursery, Dallas, North Carolina, Zone 8A. Uh, <laughs> so that's the thing about hurricanes, tropical storms, is you know they're coming, right? We got plenty of warning. You just don't know exactly what's going to happen. And so we have been watching the forecast very closely uh, for the last couple of days here. And then today we have now been officially under a flood watch and because we have potentials of flash flooding now <laughs> if you're a follower of creekside nursery you know what happened in may right we had this crazy weird thunderstorm that just blew up on us dumped five inches of rain in 30 minutes and we had massive crazy flooding that took away 40 percent of our shrub lot this entire area was completely underwater I don't want to do that again. I do not want to do that again. So we are, quote, um, airing on the side of caution, and we are beginning at least initially to move the plants that are in the, the flood zone, right? And when I say the flood zone, meaning those low-lying areas that where we lost all of those shrubs. We ended up losing about 40% of this shrub lot. They literally washed away. Like, off the property, gone, never to be seen again. And so we just don't want to do that again. So we have made the decision that we are moving those plants. If it doesn't rain a drop, then no problem. We're going to use this opportunity to reorganize, to make sure everything's right, to pull the weeds that are growing in the shrub lot, all of those things. I do not want to be out here tomorrow, Thursday, um, like moving plants in the pouring down rain because we're afraid it's going to flood. I am erring on the side of caution and I want this done today. So that is what we are doing. So uh, to give you kind of an idea, we are have all, like I said, all hands on deck. We're using the carts because that's just an easier, quicker way to do it. And we're moving them by section. So what we're doing is this is the area really from from this side from here all the way down kind of right where andrew is right now that was the area that we lost all of the shrubs crazy enough the plants that are right here literally beside the creek never move because this area is higher than what is happening down here the water as you remember started way up here overflowed the over flowed the banks and then came through and just took out all of these shrubs. So we are moving them section by section. So we got all of our sweet people. Um, this is Debbie, but Debbie with an IE, not a Y, right? That's right. That's right. And so uh, we joke that Debbie's causing us problems, but it's a, it's a Y, not an IE. And so not the same. We got Meredith. And so what we're doing is bringing them up here and kind of recreating a retail shrub lot up here between the greenhouse taking all this area and even behind the barn so that is the plan as we bring them up we're bringing them by section so that this is shoppable um, we want our customers because really they're only calling for the rains like the heavy rains are saying like three to five inches possible but it could come down all at one time that's how tropical storms work if it were a nice slow steady rain of three to five inches not a problem however that's not typically how those storms work is it's like you get these bands and they just dump tons of water we are already very very saturated because we have had as we've talked about lots of rain here in the last uh, gosh probably month now so everything is saturated so if we were to get massive downpours it is going to flood uh, you just don't know quite the extent of it so the rains will happen on Thursday, a little bit on Friday, you know, and we're going to be open Friday, maybe even tomorrow. We'll just see what happens, but we could be open on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then of course next week. So we want our customers to be able to shop. So that's why we're just kind of moving the shrub lot and we're going to bring it up here. And you can see that Jerry's kind of in charge of quote, setting up that shrub lot so that you can come through. And if you're looking for, 
you know, your orange pillars, you've got your orange pillars, you've got your chef's choice rosemary. You can walk through here. The aronias, can we just talk about how pretty these aronias are? Um, oh my gosh. No, these are not aronias. These are the Indian hawthorns. These are the, sorry, squirrel here for a second. Oh yeah. So this is the La Vida Moss. Look at that. So yes, yeah, an Indian hawthorn. Isn't that gorgeous? Great evergreen shrub, by the way. Um, so that is what we are doing today is kind of take you along for the journey that you can see this. We're going to get this all taken care of. Also, supposedly the stone for the garden box project is set to arrive today. I don't have high hopes that it's going to arrive today. More than likely, it'll probably arrive tomorrow when we have that downpour of the three to five inches that's when I'm sure that it will arrive. So hopefully that will arrive today. We'll show you that. Um, but yeah, here we have an impromptu day at the nursery where we're moving the shrub lot. So just come join us for the ride. So uh, the truck is here and he has uh, seven pallets, I think. I was trying to count. Seven pallets of the wall block. The truck, you'll notice, is not full. Bless his heart, it was so funny. It was, uh, they had to take four pallets off because it was overweight. If you know anything about tractor trailers and going up and down the road, uh, trucks and trailers are rated for a certain weight limit. He was well over that weight limit, um, and that's how you get stopped by the DOT and the state troopers. So they had to keep taking pallets off until he got to the weight that his truck is rated to. So what he has is this cool, when they come, they have their little um, 
their little piggyback uh, forklifts on there. And so he will use that to unload uh, these pallets. So uh, we'll see if we can get one stay out of his way. But this is the, we get, we're get using the Bell Guard products, getting them from a site one. And so what we have is the Castle Manor wall. Uh, this is the Grana and we have it in the Oxford color. And you can see this one came from uh, Ridgeway, South Carolina. So that is the block. The Castle Manor is going to be um, there's three different sizes and you, I, hopefully you can see it through the plastic, but there's three different sizes of the block. And so you use them interchangeably. That way it kind of gives it a little bit more of a quote natural look to it as opposed to them all being the exact same size. And so we went with the Oxford because it is more of just a nice gray. It's not, I wouldn't say, it still has some, some you know, personality to it a little bit. Uh, but because of it being up there on the garden box area, we wanted, uh, we have unique stone is the gray in that H stone. So we had that gray. The, um, we of course are gonna have the permeable pavers. So that is going to be in that same kind of grayish family. And then the Vego boxes that we're using are called midnight blue. So you have that classic gray silver and then that midnight blue together should look really really nice i'm not sure as far as like when the rest of the stuff is coming that is why we're putting up up here at production we were going to put it at the house which you know because it's closer to the construction site we were going to put it where in the kind of in the back where the uh the tractor shed as we call it <laughs> used to be of course that's been demoed but we're like well there's gonna be so many there's, there's going to be quite a few pallets of stone. So we said, you know what, we're just going to bring it up here. And um, so that way it's out of the way as we need them. It's a beautiful thing about having the machinery that we have is as we need it, we'll just grab a pallet and bring it down there. So that way it's not too cluttered at the house. And then we have plenty of room here for those pallets to just kind of hang out and, you know, wait till they are ready to go. So what we're going to do is just watch him uh, get this unloaded. It shouldn't take him too long to get it unloaded once he gets everything straight and then we'll go back down to the shrub lot and finish up that project it's going really well nice and quick so that's good so there was actually 11 pallets on the truck and the next truck is i think already on its way come on in baby just ignore me i'm fine and uh so so we got 11 pallets of them and let me show you what they look like they are um like I said, same ones that we used on the back patio. So you can really see the three different sizes here and you get to choose how you want to mix and match and create just a quote natural look. So you'll notice that they have on one side, they have the holes, right? So some of the pallets are flipped different ways. So these guys have the holes and then these guys right here have the grooves. So this wall system you put together using glue and these pins. So these are the pins that are in, in their bag. They're like fiberglass. If they're the same ones that we used before, they're like fiberglass pins. So what you do is you take these pins and you use a mallet and you pop them down into the holes. Then when you put the next one on, I think you put glue, right? So you'll put a, a string of glue on each side. And then you take these guys and flip them over. And depending on if you need to offset these blocks, you'll put the tops of the pins in depending on what groove that you want. So if you want it just to be straight on top of each other, obviously the pins go in the middle or you could go either way. So this is the system that we used on, like I said, the back porch and the back patio area and it was really easy to use relatively easy to put together and they're not nearly as heavy um, of the blocks as what we have here so these guys where these are what i would call like very commercial industrial looking blocks they're all the same yeah there's more work involved in this we have to fill the voids for gravel ah so they're hot those the these walls, these blocks are hollow, so you have to fill the holes with gravel 
or this is a solid block. Um, and they're not incredibly heavy. I mean, I can pick, I mean, they're heavy, but they're not, like I can pick these up right here. Um, so we've got this truck. Uh, he is leaving. He is all nice and empty. We've got this, and then we've got another truck on the way. We'll see what's on that. It's on its way. So we'll uh, see what that happens, and then it is lunchtime, so the staff is eating lunch. We're going to go make some lunch ourselves. Um, got some hot dogs at the grocery store today, so we're going to have some hot dogs for lunch. So depending on when that truck's coming, I might leave Jerry up here to get that truck, and I'm going to go uh, grill some hot dogs right quick. And uh, we'll see you when we'll see you in just a minute. All right, my friends, so uh, the second truck arrived, and we have quite a line of stone here. Uh, Andrew was helping take delivery of this second truck as we were finishing up our hot dog, which was delicious, by the way. Um, and I was like, Andrew, I think we need to do a bigger project next time because we have a lot of stone here, a lot of stone. So, of course, this was the wall that we showed you earlier, right? And then we have a couple pallets of the caps. So these caps are just flat pieces on the top and the bottom. And that is what you literally just put on top of the wall, like right what you see right here. So it just makes it a nice, smooth finish. If you're interested, that is the Westgate cap in Oxford. So then that same kind of gray blue family, right? So it's got those, some grays, some blues, a little bit of browns in there. And then here we go. So here are the permeable pavers and they have, I think just, this is, they only have two options as far as permeable pavers. This is the Aqualine and it is in the Hatteras color. So you see that it's three pieces. And so the Hatteras is very much in that family of the grays, the, the little bit of blue, a little bit of brown in there. And it comes in three pieces. So three different sizes. And that way you can mix and match however you want your design to be. But notice the thickness on these things. These guys are solid. I don't know the actual, I don't have the measurement in front of me, um, but that's, I would say three inches. So you can actually use these permeable pavers for driveways. We have a local coffee shop, a town over, and their entire parking lot is made with the permeable pavers. And so you absolutely can use this for driveways and you know, driving you know, cars and all the heavy stuff on there obviously we're just going to be using it for like a patio type area but the benefit of using the permeable pavers is the pavers themselves are not permeable meaning that water is not going to be absorbed into the stones what happens is is when you place them you'll see that they have these notches so you space them at a certain distance so that you have these gaps between the pavers we'll backfill it with some very small fine gravel. So this is the permeable part, right? So water would come off of here, go into all the nooks and crannies and the crevices, and that's where the water goes in. So obviously this prevents a lot of the runoff. It is, you know, the water goes, returns back to the earth. And if you're in the city, it doesn't go into your storm drains. It just returns back to the earth. So that is the benefit of doing the permeable pavers and super nice and thick. And we have, um, we have all these pallets are the pavers. Now, to me that this seems like a lot of pavers, we'll see how, if we need them all. Typically what happens is if you, you're in a big project like this and you don't use, like if you have a pallet of, or pallet or two or however many left over that you did not use, typically the company will buy them back. So it's not like you're stuck with them. Sometimes if we have like a half a pallet, you know, obviously we keep that because you never know of another project, like a little small thing that you want to do, um, that kind of situation. But if we overbought or overestimated, then typically they will buy back the pallets. So that's a good thing. Um, trying to think what else to tell you on that. Uh, once Debbie passes through and things dry up enough, then we'll go ahead and begin construction on the wall. We'll do the construction on that back wall up against Hydrangea Hill. That is where we will start. 
get that wall in um, because once we get that wall going then we can get gravel down and then after that we would probably do the wall up against the cottage garden on that back side then we can go ahead and put the permeable pavers in but the we are the last part of the project will be the small retaining wall that runs the whole length of the driveway um, so yeah so getting that up there so we can get the deck boxes not the deck boxes the garden boxes in and um, yeah so pavers are here blocks are here everything we need is here so now we're going to head back down to the nursery see what is left what needs to be done and um, so that way we can move on with our day and the rains can come and we can sleep easy tonight knowing that things are safe on the shrub lot my friends so we're back down here at the shrub lot my people are getting ready to drive off so I, I told him I was like wait just a minute so this is the deal we got two wagons full uh, the first wagon it was plants that we're we're gonna cull right just get rid of because they're either they're they're looking sad or or whatever uh, but Andrew and Mary Claire's mama she is the queen of rehabilitation so those are all gonna go home to Celeste and she's gonna take those and then these guys back here are um, going back up on the straw blood so gonna do a little rehab on these guys if they need it and or wherever it is that they're going to go so those are going back on the shrub lot so all the peoples are going to go take a ride back up there and then what they're going to unload put all those plants away and um then they're going to bring the blower back down and we're going to clean off the um the shrub lot so we're just going to blow everything pick the large weeds out and we're good to go so we basically took out the lower half of the shrub lot and then this is higher ground i might just take that one hydrangea <laughs> and move it over but this whole section is higher ground so these should all be just perfectly fine not a problem and then up here is <laughs> the uh, temporary shrub lot so all the wagons are nice and lined up right here in case we get some people in the next couple of days and then here we have temporary shrub lot everybody is categorized put you know together so you have like abelias abelias are together oh we got a snake all right we're gonna go see a snake hang on it's not it's it's not venomous it's not no all right so there was a snake we were we've had this snake hanging out by the by the creek and so the question was was it a copperhead or is it a water snake and we're pretty sure it's a water snake uh at first we thought it was a copperhead but as we said copperheads they uh they will boldly stand their ground where water snakes are very skittish and this is a very skittish snake so we're just gonna let him be and nobody goes plays <laughs> in the rocks at the creek all right so back to what i was talking about y'all it is never dull here there is never a dull moment i have not been bored in 19 years <laughs> being a mama of three and being a business owner you're never bored um so here there we go back up here uh everything's nice and neat and organized the only quote downside of doing this is that there is not irrigation up here so we do not have automatic irrigation obviously we have hoses and we can get from there we can pull over we can water but you see like all the roses of sharon all the azaleas are here together and then of course <laughs> we have the hose link my people are hooping and hollering i don't know they're just having a good time they're loving life um so yeah everything is organized hibiscuses are all put together um you name it gardenias you got it so they're all put together so obviously 
not going to have to worry about watering for the next couple of days because <laughs> of Debbie. And then, so really, we'll have to start thinking about water probably depends on what it does on Friday, what kind of rain we get on Friday. So we'll have to be concerned on starting on like Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, but Monday, we should be able to come back and put everything back on the lot because, of course, all the threat will be gone. But um, yeah, so here it is. Lovely day here at Creekside Nursery. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, we pray that nothing, that this was all for nothing. It would be great and uh, that we don't get the big rain. I know I haven't seen the, the news lately, but I know that South Carolina, low country South Carolina, Charleston has been absolutely hammered. We actually had some of our sweet customers from Pinehurst, North Carolina. So they are, I don't know, two, two and a half hours east of us and they have gotten already tons of rain they had like seven inches so they just they just left their house they know their house is fine so they're like we're just gonna we're gonna go to higher ground so they are going to the mountains but so eastern north carolina low country south carolina all that coast of south carolina I'm not sure about georgia how it's doing um but massive amounts of rain and then the flooding so that's what the concern is so thoughts and prayers are with everybody that has been dealing with debbie and the flooding because that is a really a big threat and it's not just flash flooding but it is a flooding that comes and stays for days so thoughts and prayers with all of um, those people who are affected uh, we fully recognize that this is these are just plants it's no big deal at the end of the day they're just plants and you you recoup and you move on but you do what you can right so if you know something's going to happen or there's a threat of something happening you try to be preventative and take steps forward to make sure that you know be a good steward of the gifts that you have been given. So that's what we were doing today. We appreciate our staff being the amazing people as they always are. We'll see you in the next video. Y'all stay safe. We love you. Bye friends.